Typically, patients seen in A&E had an A&E encounter started, and this encounter would be ended when the patient left the department, regardless of whether they were admitted or discharged. For those patients who were admitted to the wards, a new inpatient encounter was started. Hence, for what would really be seen clinically as a single episode of care, generated two encounters. We have now moved to a single encounter system. For patients who are admitted via the A&E department, at the point of decision to admit, known as DTA, the encounter flips to an inpatient type of encounter. The main reason for this is that it will allow clinical information captured during the initial A&E part of the encounter to, to flow through seamlessly into the inpatient encounter. Hopefully in this video you will see the benefits of this and this will help you to use the system and the new workflows to the best advantage. In this example I have a test patient, Huntsman. We can see he's in majors, he's been in the hospital nearly an hour, a doctor's been allocated and he has a problem with his upper limb. He's already been referred to the orthopaedic team. From the icons, we can see an X-ray of the left wrist is ordered. There are various assessments due. The consultation request has already been made. And we have a signed off ED definitive assessment. From this point, there are several options for this patient. It could be that he's discharged home directly perhaps with outpatient follow-up. Or it may be that the orthopaedic surgeons need to admit him. Also, if there's any delay in the orthopaedic team being able to see the patient, or perhaps the A&E department is busy and it's already been nearly four hours, then the department may wish to consider moving the patient around to the seated observation unit or the observation unit. These areas are now classified as inpatient areas. And so to move a patient from A&E into one, the encounter needs to be flipped to an inpatient type of encounter. This means the DTA process needs to be activated. It also means that if the patient is subsequently admitted by the orthopedic team, there will now be a transfer from one inpatient area, for example, the observation unit, to the orthopaedic ward. Whatever the outcome for any patient in A&E, whether they are discharged home directly, transferred out to another provider, admitted for observation or admitted into the hospital for definitive treatment, the decision to admit or discharge cannot be completed until the A&E discharge summary is complete. This is a key document and wherever possible, it needs to be completed in real time as the patient journeys through the department. Let's assume for a minute that we didn't need immediate orthopaedic intervention here. That perhaps our patients had been put in plaster, given some analgesia, and it was felt he could be discharged home directly with fracture clinic follow-up. I can either right click on the patient's name and activate the discharge process or I can access the DPOP process from the toolbar. Either way, I'm taken to this screen. Some of the details are already filled in, demographic details and presenting complaint of the patient. In order to complete a discharge summary, a final diagnosis is required. And for an A&E discharge summary, this must be taken from the new emergency care data set. If we click on the pencil icon next to diagnosis, we can see that this patient already has an impossible admitting diagnosis of a closed fracture of the radius and ulna. In order for this to pull onto the discharge summary, we need to make it a confirmed discharge diagnosis. By right clicking, I can modify the diagnosis. I can now change this to a discharged, confirmed diagnosis. We can click OK. 
Markers reviewed and close. You can now see that this diagnosis has pulled onto the discharge summary. The diagnosis box is now greyed out. Meds reconciliation is not compulsory, but this patient had some paracetamol in the department and he would like some to go home with. You can see it has an ordered state because we've used it while he was in the department to prescribe this for him to take home. You can click on the pill box. The blue cross here indicates there's some missing details. The system will want to know yellow fields and anything in bold. So this was not an admission medication. I'm giving it for pain. I don't expect the GP to need to continue that. I'm going to give seven days. You can now see there are no missing details. The blue cross has disappeared. We can reconcile and sign the order. And now be asked where I want this medication to come from. I'm going to give this patient a supply from the emergency department. Final signature. You can also see that this information is being pulled onto your discharge summary. You'll need to record treatment given to the patient in the department. It will nearly always include vital signs, quite often verbal advice, perhaps a plaster and a sling. We've given some oral medication. You can see that this information also pulls onto the discharge summary. The next section is your opportunity to write instructions for the GP. There are then three boxes that require ticking. In this case, initial treatments complete. We're discharging the patient to their usual place of resident and follow-up is going to be in the fracture clinic. The final box confirms that you're happy that the discharge summary has been finalised. It gives an opportunity to indicate whether the patient is to be given a copy. Again, sign this form and the discharge summary is complete. All patients in ED will need this completing regardless of what is to happen next. Particularly if it's getting near the four hour target or there's going to be a delay in the specialist reviewing the patient, clicking this button would admit the patient and record the time would then transfer him to your observation unit or seated observation unit area where you could wait for the specialty input. If the patient is ready to go home, then this discharge button would be pressed, which sends the discharge summary to the GP and stores a copy of this as a document in the medical notes. Now, if we go back to the record and take the a slightly different situation where I'm actually going to refer the patient for orthopaedic review, perhaps because I, I need some more advice or I think the patient needs treatment. I've already made the referral, which if you remember, you can access by right-clicking the patient's name and go to the ED referrals form. On launch point, I have a reminder here, it was referred to orthopaedics at 25 past six. If I filter my launch point view, we can see the outstanding referrals in the department. As previously, it's expected that you would bleep the appropriate admitting doctor. If, in this example, the orthopaedic surgeon's not in A&E, he will be most likely to log into PowerChart to have a look at the patient that you are referring. I've logged into PowerChart here to give you an idea what the inpatient clinicians see, and in particular to demonstrate the advantage of single encounter and how the information you have captured flows through. At the point of referring this patient, the admitting specialty can see when the patient arrived and that they've not been to the hospital before. You can see the home medication that the patient takes 
and that they've already had some paracetamol in the department. In this test case, the x-ray result is not back, but I can see that it's ordered. In the live system, as soon as the result is available, it will be indicated in the diagnostics column. I can see the latest vital signs for the patient. I can also see two clinical documents created in the emergency department. If I click on the emergency department progress note, I can see everything that's already been recorded. The specialist should be much better appraised of the patient's condition before they even come to review them. Another advantage of the single encounter is that should the patient be admitted and require clerking, the inpatient teams will use this view. You can see certain details are already filled in. Again, information pulled through from the A&E part of the encounter. We can see past medical history, documents created by yourselves. These can be opened. If necessary, we can cut and paste from them into our documents. We can see allergies, home medication, medications this admission, the latest vital signs, the results of any diagnostic or labs, a problem list. Remember, this is all information that was entered in A&E and my assessment and plan is already pre-populated that I can document against as required. The inpatient team has access to their care team here and can put the patient on the appropriate take list if necessary. From within the patient's record and task list, you can also see that the referral from the A&E department has generated a task. If the admitting specialty click this, a form opens that they are required to tick and sign once they have reviewed your patient. Alternatively, the specialty team may already be in ED and logged on to FirstNet, also access the referral form here. You can see the orthopedic referral. If they wish to document this, they can indicate they've seen the patient and brief details as required. Once the specialty team have given their opinion, they will either discharge the patient, in which case they need to complete the final steps of the discharge summary, and they can access that discharge summary either by clicking Depart in A&E. The rest of the details won't need changing. We can save the form. And again, when the patient's actually discharged from the department, the Discharge button can be pressed. and the final details completed to discharge the encounter. Alternatively, it may be felt that the patient needs admission. At this point, our patient is still in the main A&E department, i.e. he is in an A&E encounter. So we need to start the decision to admit process. Right click the patient's name and highlight ED decision to admit. Warning will come up that this conversation will admit your patient as an inpatient and ask if you want to continue. In this example, we do. We'll ask for a date and time. The source of the admission. The new lead clinician And if the clinician has more than one treatment function under their specialty, this will need to be selected. Once complete, save this. You'll notice that the status of the patient box has now changed color and a new clock has started. Even though the patient's being admitted, it's important that the discharge summary is still completed. The discharge information may now need changing. The 
In terms of discharge status, treatment in the department is still complete, but the patient is now going to a ward outside of the ED. Although fracture clinic will probably still be required, we don't really know what the outcome will be at this point, and so no referral for outpatients is formally required. We can save the changes and the patient can be admitted. Click here. The discharge summary will be sent to the GP and the time the patient was admitted is recorded. If we were to look at the notes at this point, and in particular view the documents, you can now see that the emergency department GP letter is available. But if I open this, looks exactly as it will look like when received by the GP. Similarly in power chart, the admitting team can also see this document and indeed elements contained in it can be cut and pasted into their own documentation as required. Final task for the specialty team to go to the medical task, refer to orthopaedics, open the form, identify that the patient's been seen, and if possible, record a very brief outcome. We sign the form, the task is marked as done, and on refreshing or going back into the system, it will disappear from the task list. Patient no longer requires these TTOs, so I can record that this was not done. And again, that task will be marked off and not appear subsequently. You'll notice that now we have pressed either the admit or discharge button, in this case admit, the patient no longer appears on launch point can, however, see them in the emergency department view in the checkout column. The final step, which needs to be done by A&E, if you're moving the patient to the seated observation unit or the observation unit, or the wards, if the patient is being admitted to an inpatient area, is to transfer the patient. To transfer the patient to their new location, whether that is the seated observation unit, the observation unit, or an inpatient ward, we should select PM conversation and transfer. We need to select the receiving ward. Perhaps there's no bed available at the moment, so I need to move this patient for now to the observation unit. I will need to allocate a bed. And then, okay. Assuming you've already set up lists for your new inpatient location areas of the observation unit and the seated observation unit, then moving to these lists now will confirm that our patient Huntsman has been successfully transferred to room one bed nine. A bed then becomes available, perhaps on ward 21, go back into PM conversation, and transfer the patient the ward would select the appropriate ward and bed and click OK. The new workflows probably seem quite complicated at the moment, but if as much as possible can be done in real time and coded problems and diagnoses are captured rather than too much free text, then ultimately the flow of patients through the pathway will be quicker once everyone is up to speed.